Graniola. This is the Graniola channel and I'd like to tell you a folk tale. It's not at all uncommon for a character in a folk tale to ask for and receive supernatural help. The main character in the tale, the wedding dress, is a demigoddess who for many years helps human beings and then one day suddenly stops. On the very top of a mountain that was kissed by the clouds lived a beautiful maiden whose father was a woodland god and whose mother was a lovely farm girl. Shortly after she had been born, her parents ordered the nymphs in the forest to take care of her and then they flew off together to the Sky Kingdom. Because she was half human and half goddess, as she grew, she could at times look like her beautiful mother, but she also had the power of her father to turn into an animal of the forest. In addition, she could make herself visible or invisible. She could walk across a field without making any of the grain bend. She could fill her basket with vegetables from the garden without getting mud on her hands or her feet. Many stories were told about her. Some were comforting, and others were worrying. It was said that she often appeared as a blue mist that settled over the fields and orchards after a storm. Poor mountain women loved her because during these times they would often find gold coins in their baskets after they had picked fruits or planted vegetables, and they knew that the demigoddess had left them there. Just as often as she helped poor, honest, hard-working people, she was also rumored to punish bad deeds. A story was told about two hunters who were returning home with both a pig and a deer which they had killed. They met a starving old woman on the path. With tears in her eyes, that poor person begged for a small piece of meat. The two men said that they could not spare even a thin slice. Shortly after, they heard a loud thundering sound and saw what looked like a huge cloud of dust coming toward them. They quickly climbed a tall tree and from there were able to watch as a huge buffalo thundered down and devoured both the pig and the deer. The old woman knew that this had been the work of the demigoddess. Many people loved and were grateful to her. They prayed and spoke to her in their imagination. Although this did comfort her, the sad truth was that she lived an isolated life and was quite lonely. There was one young man who very often raised his face to the evening sky and begged for her help. He worked from dawn to dusk, farming on the mountainside to earn enough to care for his poor old parents. The demigoddess often made extra rainfall or the sun shine a little brighter when he needed those things for his crops. When the farmer turned 21, he would be obliged to join the army. And because his parents were afraid of this, they arranged for him to be married to a young girl on the other side of the mountain. They told him their plan, and although he wasn't overjoyed, he set off to meet his prospective bride. After he had walked a short distance, he found a beautiful young woman standing next to the path. She sadly told him that she had been watching how hard he had worked over the years, and she had helped him by making the rains pour down or the sunshine when he needed it. Because he was so good and industrious, she had fallen in love with him, and she was very sad that he was marrying another person, but still she would like to offer a gift for his bride. She gave him a package containing a wedding dress and a gold ring, and then disappeared in a blue mist. The young man sadly continued toward the home of the girl who would be his wife, but when he arrived and told the tale and handed her the wedding gift, she refused to wear either the dress or the ring. 
Since the demigoddess could be visible or invisible, and appear or disappear as she wished, she had seen all that had happened, but neither of the other two knew that she was there. And after that day, even though she did appear often as a blue mist to watch the other people on earth, she never again gave gifts or sent showers or punished wrongdoers. This is a tale that is told in the Philippines, a country which is made up of thousands of mountainous and volcanic islands.